Matthew chapter 6, verse 19 to 24 is going to be our test for this new series. Matthew chapter 6, the Bible says, Do not store up treasures here on earth, where moth eat them and rust destroys them, where thieves break in and steal. But rather Jesus says, Store your treasures in heaven where moth and rust cannot destroy and thieves do not break in and steal. Wherever your treasure is, there the desires of your heart will also be. Jesus said, your heart will always follow your treasures. So you got to tell me where your treasures are. Your eye, and he continues in the same context, your eye is like a lamp that provides light for your body. Now remember, he's talk, still talking about treasures. When your eye is healthy, your whole body is filled with light. In other words, Jesus is talking about how you view treasures, how you view money. But when your eye is unhealthy, our whole body is filled with darkness. And if the light you think you have is actually darkness, how deep that darkness is. And then he says, no one can serve two masters. This is a point he's trying to make. For you hate one and love the other. You'll be devoted to one and despise the other. You cannot serve. This is all that he's trying to say. You cannot serve God and be enslaved to money. So we're going to talk about money. And the series is entitled Investing for Eternity. Somebody say Investing for Eternity. I've had, like I mentioned earlier, heaven on my mind these last few weeks, been thinking about eternity. Part of it is the, the message, as I've been beginning to prepare these messages, these messages are troubling me. My, my foundation is being shaken, the way I view property and treasures and my life here. And God is reminding us, and I want to remind every one of us, that we are not here for a long time. And in the next few weeks, I want to place back eternity on your minds. And let you remember that, like you always hear me say, in about 40 years, most of us in this room will, will not be alive. And we, ne we need to start thinking about our investment in heaven. We have been talking about discipleship, and discipleship this year is critical. Everything we do as a church is rooted in discipleship. And as disciples, one of the things we've talked about, there are three areas that God calls us to invest. One, our time, our talent, and our treasure. Our time, we need to invest into growing, into helping others. God is giving us gifts that we need to use to serve in his kingdom. When you are involved in a grow group or a small group, you are involved in your time as a disciple. You are using your talent to serve in the church. This church is not a Costco. You don't just come here, get some few goods, disappear and come back the following week to get more goods. No. We are a body of Christ. As a body, God has given you talents, gifts to use to serve other people. Yeah. Are you still with me or I have lost you? But to, by the next few weeks, we are going to talk about the aspect of the treasure. And the passage that we just read, I'm, I'm trying to break it a little bit apart. There are three things I see here as I read this passage. God is first talking to us about the potential of our money, where our money can go, how far. The potential of investment here on earth. And if you invest here on earth, he tells us what is going to happen to it. And when you invest in heaven, then he talked to about the power of money, how money can draw, your resources can determine where your heart is. Oh, you, you are quiet. In other words, you don't need to tell me where your heart is. You show me your credit card bill, show me your expenditures, and I'll tell you where your heart is. Because the Bible says your heart will follow your spending. If you want to, your heart to follow where your money goes, then you invest it in where you want it to go. It's a heavy message. Tell somebody, tighten your belt. Tighten your belt. We are going somewhere. Then we're going to talk about the perspective, how we, we see everything, especially in the North America and in the West where 
we need to be always be fighting against materialism, money. I mean, the, the, the number one cause of divorce today in the West is money. Money destroys family, destroys people, and it can even hinder us from going to heaven. So God has put this word on my heart to bring every one of us back to understanding eternity. Are you ready? Okay, this crowd, you are with me. The rest, you can go home. And I'll, I'm going to preach only to this crowd. Are you really ready? Yeah. All right, now you are up. Let's start with the potential. Jesus began by telling us about the potential of money. Let's go back to the text in Matthew. It says, money has a potential to be invested here or there, depending on how you, you spend it. He said, don't store up treasures here on earth where moth eat them, rust destroy them, and thieves break into them. And I'll, I'll come mention about these three, the rust, the destruction, and the thieves. But rather, store up your treasure in heaven where there is no moth, no rust, and no destructions, where there's no armed robbery. Thieves are not allowed where you put your money in heaven. Are you still with me? So there are two things he's talking about. He said, your money has earthly potential. The first thing he said was that it has, and you, you can write this down, first and foremost, it has earthly potential. You can invest here on earth, or you can decide to invest in heaven for eternity. But he says, the decision is yours, the choice is yours. If you decide to invest here on earth, this is what is going to happen. Number one, that money will rust. He said heat will rust. And our money rusts in so many ways. First of all, it depreciates and it just de destroys. You buy a car tomorrow, it's metal. Metal, they rust. The moment that you drive that car out of the parking lot, it begins to rust. It depreciates. It doesn't add value, Jesus is saying. Every day our monies are, ra are rusting. We call it inflation. You don't see it, you can't smell it, but it's eating into your wallet. If you invest here, Jesus is saying most likely this is what is going to happen to it. It's going to rust. The second thing he says also is that if you invest here, it will be robbed. Thieves will come and steal it. There are many ways, physically or even by the stock market. The stock market can steal it. Even taxes can steal it. You have your income and 40% uh, go on taxes. This is what happened here. There are no taxes in heaven. When you invest your money in the kingdom, you know, Jesus is just talks like, a, he, he really is a financier. He's so looking on earth. He said, look, let me tell you. You have money in your hands. Let me tell you what you want to do with it. If you, want, if you choose to do that, it's going to happen. Or if you choose to invest into the kingdom, there's going to be a blessing. And many times we take that for granted. We haven't really critically looked at this verse coming from the heart of the master and how he views money, resources, and property. Are you still with me? He said not only would there be a robbery, he said it will be ruined eventually. Either you're going, to lock, you're going to lose it. Look, nobody dies and you go with your money. When you die, it's all gone. Somebody else will come and enjoy it. And if you don't die before the second coming of Christ, the Bible says something is going to happen to it. It's going to be destroyed. Second Peter chapter 3, verse 10. The Bible says, But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in which the heavens will pass away with a great noise. And the elements will met with fervent heat. We're talking about ruins. Both the earth and the works that are in it will be burnt up. Everything will be gone. Every vehicle, every BMW, every Mercedes Benz, including your house, a time is coming, they are all going to be ruined. Is that where your investments are? It's going to be destroyed. Very soon. It could be tomorrow. It could be the next day. Everything is going to be destroyed. He said, therefore, since all these things will be dissolved. You know, I know this church is quiet. I expected it, so that's okay. I'm not nervous. I'll continue to preach. He <laughs> says, see, I have gone through my shock the last few weeks, so I'm used to it, so I can come now and talk. He said, knowing everything is going to be destroyed, what? And it gets better, so get ready. 
what manner of persons are you to be in holy conduct and godliness? In other words, if you know these things are going to be destroyed, how do you act? We must act like it. In other words, we need to hold material possessions very loosely. Because one day they are going to be destroyed. The Bible says they're going to be destroyed by fire. Everything will be gone. Everything that you, or every skyscraper, every beauty that we will consider, all the monies that we've put in things on earth, the Bible says they're going to be destroyed. I've got eternity on my mind this morning. Then he talks about the second portfolio, the second potential. You can either lie to be ruined, to be robbed, or to rust, or you can invest into eternity. You call it the heavenly po potential, or what I call eternal potential. What is eternal potential? Eternal potential is what, when you put your money into something, what is going to do. Are you still with me? He says, first of all, when you put your money in eternity, there is no rust. In other words, that money is going to appreciate. The moment that you invest into people, you invest into the poor, you invest into missions, you invest into the kingdom, you invest into the things. In other words, when you look at your paycheck, you need to ask yourself, how much of this is going to be invested into eternity? Because that is the only one that matters. So there's no rust. Rather, it will appreciate. In Mark chapter 10, Jesus put it this way. He said, truly, I tell you, Jesus replied, no one who has left home or brothers or sisters or mother or father or children or fields for me and the gospel, when you invest into my kingdom, he said, will fail to receive a hundred times as much as in this present age. That's the word of the master. Whatever you invest, the Bible says it will appreciate it says homes, brothers, sisters, mothers, children, and fields, along with persecutions. And in this age to come, eternal life. In other words, your investment will bring forth fruit here and there. In other words, you have the opportunity to enjoy it here and also there. No rust. He also said there will be no robbery. No thieves are allowed in heaven. They are in somewhere else. Thieves cannot break in. You don't need an, uh, an alarm in your home, in your mansion in heaven. No thieves are allowed. Malachi chapter 3 verse 10 says, when we invest into our tithes and our offering, he said, bring all the tithes into the storehouse that there may be food in my house. And I will rebuke, begin to talk about the thieves. The thieves, the devourer for your sakes, so that he will not destroy the fruit of your ground. Nor shall the vine fail to bear fruit for you in the field, says the Lord, of, the Lord of hosts. When you invest into God, thieves cannot touch it. Because it is saved in the arms of God. Are you still following me? And he also said, not only will there, there will be no rust, no robbery, there will be no ruin. As opposed to the heavenly possession. It will not be ruined. Oh, I like what Luke chapter 12 verse 33 says. Luke chapter 12, verse 33. Are you with me? Do you have that verse? You don't have that verse. Anyway, the Bible talks about how we invest into the treasures of heaven, how we will experience the true treasures of heaven, which is incorruptible, which is saved for our blessing in the name of Jesus. Are you still with me? Do you have 2 Peter chapter 3? Look, look at this. 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 10. Okay, I know we're having some internet problems, but that's fine. 2 Peter chapter 3 also talks about how we need to take what God has given us and the blessings that he's going to give us is everlasting. It cannot be ruined for the glory of the living God. That's the potential that the first thing Jesus says, say you can invest in two areas. You can invest here, or you can invest there. And he says, if you invest here, it will yield nothing. Now, if I tell you that you are going to live here on earth for only 80 years, and you are going to live in heaven, not 100 years, not 200 years, not 500 years, 
not 800 years, but forever. Amen. And I tell you, the investment you make here is going to affect how you live there. Where are you going to put your, your resources? We put it in here, and we're only here for 70, 80 years. It doesn't make sense. And that's exactly what Jesus is saying. Do not put all your treasures here. Because first of all, you don't even know when you're going to pass. Look at what happened last Friday. People have invested into their children, hoping that one day they'll become hockey players in Canada. And just like that, they are all gone. Just like that. And you and I, we don't know when we're going to pass on. So we have to start preparing. We have to start investing. Some of you are going to go to heaven and you are in minus. There's no money in your account. You are in the red. Don't come borrow money from me. I'm not going to give you. You used all your money here, you know, with all the nice things. God says, no, you got to learn to invest there. Yeah. That's the first thing he said. Then the second thing he talks about is the power of money. In the same verse, in Matthew chapter 6, verse 21, he said, wherever your treasure is, there your heart and your thought will also be. I don't need to ask you where your heart is. Like I said, I just need to know how you spend your treasures. That's all. I just need to look at your budget. And that will tell me where your heart is. Unfortunately, Christians and non-Christians, our giving habits seem to be the same. We live like we don't believe in eternity. We live like we don't believe in life after death. So we live for today. And now, our minds wake, wake up in the morning and all we think about money, 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 money. How do I get this? How do I get more? How do I get... And Jesus said, why do you worry about these things? It wears down. And if you put things in the eternal perspective, what you wear, what you eat, and where you sleep, Jesus said, shouldn't it be a burden? But it's breaking marriages. It's destroying families. It's causing wars. Why is it so? Because we are not thinking Christianly. We are thinking just like the world. There were some studies that came out in America, and they said even non-believers give more to charity than Christians. And you wonder, do we really believe in the gospel that we preach? Do we actually believe in, in the God that we serve? Or we are still attached to the things here on earth. As disciples of Christ, we are meant to hold the things of the world very loosely, knowing that at any moment, uh, at any time, the trumpet will sound. At any time, the trumpet is going to sound. So we, we need to be ask ourselves every day, where is my heart? Your heart will follow where your money goes. Say, so where your treasure is, there your money also will be. There, there your heart will be. That means that your heart is not protected. You got to protect your money. Matthew chapter 19, the Bible says this in Matthew chapter, Jesus said to him, somebody comes to Christ. I really want to follow you. Jesus said you are too attached to material things. If you want to be perfect, go sell what you have, give to the poor, and you have what? You need to have treasure in heaven. It's not automatic. If you don't put anything there, you cannot withdraw anything. You want to have treasure in heaven, Jesus said to the poor, uh, to the rich man, sell some things, sell it, help the poor, invest, and come and follow me. What happened? But the young man, do you blame him? He just started. He just wants to fulfill the, the Canadian dream. But a young man had that saying. He went away sorrowfully, for he had great possessions. His heart was too attached to the material things. We have to be careful as brothers and sisters, as believers, that our hearts don't get too attached. This is what Jesus meant when he said in Matthew chapter 13. I, I, want, to, I want to wrestle with you with the scripture. Now I'm talking about... When I told you that I've been troubled the last few weeks, 
I went to the scriptures and began to study verse by verse about everything Jesus said about money. It troubled me. And I wasn't even measuring up. That's why it troubled me. I, I just began to study every time Jesus talks about money. You know what he always says? Give it away. Don't hold it. Give it away. Every time he talks about it, just give it away. Give it away. Give it away. Give it away. And yet today we are taught to hold it. Hold it. The one who has the, uh, the more toys wins. That, that, that's the language of our world today. If you have more toys, then you are the winner. You are more valuable. You are important. Jesus said, no, 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 no. Give it away. You are, you are here on a short while. Live like pilgrims. Live like you are strangers. Live like you are passing through. The Bible talks about Abraham. He said he looked for a better city. Why? He made a decision to live in tents. That's the way we are supposed to be living. The idea of tents means live temporarily. Don't live like you are going to be here 10 years or 20 years or 25 years. I wish I could tell you that, but I can't promise you that. So you have to live in tents and look for a better city where the streets are made of gold. The Bible said, now he will receive the seed. Now this is the words of Jesus. The tongues is he who hears the word and the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches. I'll come to that in a second. Why is riches so deceitful? It is deceitful because it promises you something it will not fulfill. Promises you joy, promises you happiness, you're going to be valuable on top of the world. If that is really true, people in Hollywood should be the happiest people on earth. And yet they are the most miserable. Can't divorcing tomorrow, committing suicide the other day, always on drugs and could not even leave. But they've got it all. The deceitfulness of riches choke the world and it becomes unfruitful. What Jesus is saying that it is when you are attached to money, it can choke you and you will not make it to heaven. You will be unfruitful. In other words, how you treat money can also affect your destiny. So it's not a light subject. I realize as a pastor, in some ways, I've let you down. Because I'm one person who don't like talking about treasures and money. I just want to focus on the more spiritual things. And Jesus reminded me this is very spiritual. In fact, in one passage in the Gospel of Luke, he said, how you treat money will determine whether God can trust you with spiritual things. Oh, that, that, that was a hard one. In other words, if God, if, if God can't trust you with money, he cannot trust you with spiritual things. And it's true because your heart will always follow where your money is. Where are you? Come on, let, let's be real here. Let's not play church. Where is your heart? Yes, you come to church on a Sunday, you do all the music, but once you walk out of it, which is your God? And God said you cannot serve two masters. You cannot serve God and you cannot serve money. You need to make your mind today who you follow. If you want to follow God, then you got to hold material things very, very loosely. The last time you fought with your wife, what was it about? I bet it had to do with money. But that's God's word. And you're going to hear from me in the next few weeks about investing eternity, eternity, eternity. God is coming soon. Because we don't want to be choked. Let me give you an, another verse if we have it. Do we have Luke chapter 17? Thank you. He said, in that day, when Jesus comes, the way you are attached to money can affect whether you are going to be, you are going to be left behind or you are going to Go up with him. So he warns the people who are listening. Say, in that day, he who is on the housetop and his goods are in the house. You're on the housetop. Maybe you're doing some roof. I don't know why you are there, but let's assume you're doing some roof repairs. Or you're, you're like me. You are cleaning your gutters. And the trumpet sound. Banana! You're like, oh, I've got some money in the house. I got to go take the money. Jesus said, let him not come down to take them away. 
it is when we are attached to these things that the first thing that comes to our mind, my money, my money, my money, Jesus, hang on, my money, my, my jewelry, my, my diamonds. I got to go get my diamonds. I cannot lose my diamonds. And likewise, the one who is in the field, let him not turn back. I know field represents your businesses, your investment. And he says something profound. Remember lost wife. Do you know that this is the shortest verse in the Bible? And yet very loaded. If we at least remember this verse, it will help us for eternity. He said, remember lost wife. What happened to lost wife? Being delivered, being asked to leave the place, destruction is coming, don't look back, it's all going to be consumed with fire. But she was too attached to her staff. I don't know what she had. Maybe she has a few bracelets and stuff. And the Bible says she looked back and she became a pillar of salt. Whoever seeks to save his life will lose it. And whoever loses his life will preserve it. These are the words of the master. Speaking to us in North America, in everywhere. Saying that we cannot allow the power of money to destroy us and preventing us for destiny. Some people are going to miss heaven because they are too attached to material things. You got to today learn to pray and say, God, help me to hold this, this stuff. Look, before I, I used to love my car, and when I come in the morning or I, I go, I come out from Walmart the other day, and somebody has scratched my car. And I stood there and I was shocked. I was defeated. I was depressed. I stood there and said, Somebody scratch my car. My car. Where your treasure is. I don't get like that when somebody says, oh, there was a person who was supposed to come to church to give their life to Christ. They didn't show up. I should, I should feel the same way. I should go, a soul. A soul. But I don't really care. But my car, oh, God, scratched. The first time I bought my car, you know that that car was only $450, but it was my car. That car has no reverse, but it was my car. <laughs> you know the story. I'm not going to go into it. Every morning, I will wake up and polish my car. I may not have read my Bible or pray, but my car needs to be washed. And I will polish it. I remember the first time I went. My wife said, where are you going? I said, I'm going to Canadian Ties. I'm going to buy the best polish available for my Chevrolet. Came, washed my car, polished it, stood behind, and I'm like, yeah, this, this baby is ready to roll. Where your treasure is, there your heart will also be. Finally, he shifts gear in the same verses, and they talk about the perspective. We have talked about the potential. Jesus said you can invest here on earth, or you can invest for eternity. Then he talks about be careful where your heart is, where your treasure is, because your heart will follow where your treasure is. And then the next final verses, he talks about you got to have perspective. He said how you view money will determine how dark your heart is. If I'm wearing sunglasses, everything that I see is dark, and I bring darkness into my body. If you see dark, you receive darkness. If you see light, you receive light. Let's go back to the verses again. He says this in Matthew chapter 6. Are we okay? Are we freezing? The devil is a liar. Okay. Now, you, you, you remember the verses. Today we're having problem with internet choice, but that, that's okay. The word is in us. It, Jesus talks about the word and the light. He said, look at the perspective. If your eyes are darkened, 
then your whole body is darkened. If your, your eyes are light, everything in you becomes light. Your eye is like a lamp that provides light for your body. When your eye is healthy, your whole body is filled with light. In other words, if you don't have a healthy view of money, everything inside you becomes darkened, and everything inside you is run by this darkness. If all that you see is just the value of this, the value of that, it's going to destroy your being. And it talks about how deep that darkness can be. And he said, you can't serve two masters. What is he talking about? He's talking about two kinds of perspectives. The eye which is darkness and the eye which is light. So first of all, he talks about the darkness. That is the human perspective. He said, if you want to see things this way, and the human perspective will cause you to be destroyed. So I want you to write it down, human perspective. God said, don't see things like humans. What is human perspective like? How do we view money? Number one, our perspective is that money gives us status. Amen? Why do we want money? Why do we want to become rich? Why do we want to? Because it gives us status. Why do we want to live in West Van? Some of you live in Surrey, but you tell people you live in White Rock. White Rock. Or I live in South Surrey. Or Northfield. No, no, no. Where do you live? I live in Fraser Heights. But it's Surrey. No, 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 no. Don't connect me. Define me with Surrey. These new team people, I don't live near them. Why? Why? Status. Where you live, what you drive. Most of us may drive four by four. That will never leave the city. But that's what it was built for. Don't look at me with those eyes. I have, the Holy Spirit has convicted me. Don't worry. It's supposed to be off-road, but you've never gone no off-in road. You are always from Surrey to Newtown to whatever you are back. So what do you drive four by four? It's all status. Come on, let's talk about it. It's all status. Why do we buy deep sea watches that we never even go under the sea? You're laughing. You know what I'm talking about. You know what I'm talking about. Come on, let's talk to each other. And I know what I'm talking about. Wow, this watch is very expensive. $350. You can go, you can go about 50 meters, 100 meters below sea level. Really? And your feet has even touched the waters of White Rock <laughs> since you bought that watch. Somebody say, hey. We need to wrestle with this and be careful that the influences of the world don't get so deep into us. It's, if you want, by all means, I like nice cars. Drive a nice car. By all means, buy a nice watch. By all means, live in a nice place. Of course, by all means, and I'll show you in a moment why God is giving us some of these things to enjoy. But the problem is the attachment. Those of you, how many of you remember the movie uh, Forrest Gump? There's a statement he made that I'll never forget. Forrest Gump said, there's only so much money a man needs. And the rest of it is for showing off. How true that is. We have to be careful as children of God. We don't get caught up with the will of the world. The Bible warns us, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed. In other words, as you receive blessings from God, remember to put some aside for eternity. Because the world will tell you, go bigger, go faster, go enlarge your tent. One day, he, he, Jesus, this same Jesus gave a parable about a man who, who has been blessed so much. He said, this man looked around and said, wow, I have so much. What do I have to do with this? He never thought of eternity. He said, okay, this is what I'll do. I will build bigger bands. I will enlarge that. And I will put them in, and I will tell my soul, my soul, rest and enjoy. And the Bible said, Jesus said, you are a fool. Today your soul will be quiet from you, and you tell me who will be coming to enjoy your treasures. These are the words of the master. The one that we follow, the Jesus that we follow, challenges us the way we look at money. Challenges us. 
You see, when we talk about materialism, we are talking about looking at properties and things as the ultimate fulfillment of life. That's materialism. And we, you and I know that it's not. It's not. It is deceitful. The human perspective only sees things that way. So in Luke chapter 12, verse 13, Jesus said to them, somebody came and said, they were fighting over property. And Jesus said, take heed and beware of covetousness. For one's life does not consist in the abundance of the things he possesses. At least this is how Jesus sees properties. Your life does not consist. It doesn't make you. you. Who you are does not determine where you live, what you wear, and what you drive. A man's life does not consist of the abundance of the things he possesses. Don't forget that. Say, don't worry about these things, he says. Status. Human perspective also sees things as satisfaction. Oh, if I get more of this, I'll be fulfilled. When you are looking to material things to bring fulfillment in your life, your eyes are darkened. They are darkened. Ecclesiastes chapter 5, verse 10 says, listen to it. He who loves silver will not be satisfied with silver, nor he who loves abundance with increase. This also is vanity. How do you see? Is your eye so dark? In, how do you view material possessions? Is it for status? Is it for satisfaction? Or maybe for you, it's security. Jesus has words for us through Solomon. I call him Solomon the prophet. Look at what he says in Ecclesiastes. He said, will you set your eyes on that which is not? There's no security. For riches, certainly, oh, come on. What happened to my verses? Thank you. And today we're having problems. For riches suddenly make themselves wings. They fly away like an eagle towards heaven. In other words, you can't depend on them. You can't. They're not secure. You can never put your hope, your life in them. You need, at the end of this service, every one of us. Like I said, I've had three weeks to reflect deeply on these things, and it worried me because I wasn't living according to this word. And you have opportunity, every one of us, today at the service, to look at how dark your eyes are. How do you view material things? What are the things that make you cry, that makes you laugh? What, what are the things that drives you? Let me conclude with the other perspective. The human perspective, Jesus said, will not stand. But what about the heavenly perspective? How are we supposed to view Properties, money, material things. Number one, we have to view it as a capital from God, as a blessing from God. God said he has given us everything to, to be freely enjoyed. He created the Garden of Eden, by the way. It had everything. I mean, Garden of Eden is your, is your, is your first star hotel. Created in Adam, enjoyed it. But remember why you are here. You are not here just to enjoy it. Be fruitful and multiply. You have created for a purpose. You cannot be attached to things. They are meant to be enjoyed by God. Ecclesiastes chapter 5 verse 19 says, As for every man to whom God has given riches and wealth and given power to eat it, to receive this his inheritance and rejoice in this labor, this is a gift from God. God does not hate possessions. God does not hate material things. God does not hate the fact that you have money. God does not hate that you enjoy it. Just remember where it comes from and don't be attached to it. That's a good way of looking at it. They are just things. When, once I came and saw my car being scratched, I should have said, it's just metal. I'll get it fixed. That's why we have insurance. But it ruined my day. Because my heart was in my Chevrolet. Don't look at me that I'm the only one feeling that way. It's a blessing from God. Enjoy it, but don't be attached to it. Number two, you have to look at this as a channel of blessing. When God brings you resources, it's because he wants you to be a channel. He says, Abraham, I am going to bless you so that you become what? A blessing. The reason why God is blessing you is not for you to take it all by yourself. There comes a moment, and my wife will tell you that we have come to that moment, where you need to say, we've had enough. Honey, we have had enough. 
whatever now we're getting, we have to learn to share and give others. Every one of you must determine what your enough is. And not keep hoarding, not keep expanding, not keep building, not keep accumulating. It, it will rust, it will rob, it will be ruined. You need to come to a place and say, this is all that we need. The rest, we are going to be a channel of blessing. I want to support missions. I want to support the poor. If you want to support missions, put money in missions, your heart will be in missions. Support the poor, your heart will be in, with the poor. Support the church, your heart will be with the church. Where you put your money, your heart will follow. Am I saying something? Let me give you the final one. Not only is it a capital from God, a channel from God, it's a means of communication the gospel. Look at money as a kingdom. He said, guys, we are not here for, for long. How can I put, where can we put money so that souls will be saved? Can we support missionaries? Can we support efforts? Can we support whatever? We need to bring more people into the kingdom. We need resources. When you get a promotion, the first you need to ask is, God, how can I help? I didn't expect this. God, I've got this money come to me. The first thing that comes to your mind is the kingdom, the kingdom. And I need to spend some of these and I need to put some in my bank in heaven. I'm done. This is just the beginning. These are the words of Jesus. I pray that you go home, read these verses again. He speaks directly into our heart. Challenges us. He said, open our eyes. How dark are my body? How do I view this? Do I wake up and go to bed? What is it on your mind? I want to challenge you this morning. From today, I want you to start having eternity on your mind when you wake up. Eternity on your mind when you go back to bed. This is how we prepare for the thereafter. Will you stand up with me for a moment? I know God is spoken to you because he did speak to me. I need you to pray. You speak to nations.